Hello everyone, welcome to Fraser Not The Exorcist, and today I felt like talking about the best movie that ended 2021 for me, and that movie was Last Night in Soho by Edgar Wright. Now the movie came out around October, but like most cases when it comes to new movies, I didn't get a chance to see it until about two months later, which is December, late de- late December, uh, at least for me. And uh, and at that time, when everybody had already done their reviews, because I like to watch reviews and stuff, so I so I couldn't watch any reviews for it until I watched it for myself. And two months later, not gonna lie, didn't feel like watching anybody else's reviews on the movie. But then I just so I just kind of just went in and watched it for myself. And while I wasn't like blown away, I really really enjoyed myself. To the point where like uh, I, I was really going through like a rough time at the time like because of my job and stuff but it really helped to brighten my day and end the year off in a good period i was originally supposed to drop this video uh at the actual end of december or at least early january but uh you know procrastination got the best of me so better now than never at least so let's get into the movie. Uh, basic plot summary, because plot's not really important to how I feel about this thing. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it is important, but, you know, like, this isn't going to be some breakdown of the plot or anything. But So basically, it's about this young girl played by Thomasin McKenzie, uh, who has this infatuation with the 60s. And she moves from her small town to go to this fashion school to become a fashion designer in the big city, forgot what the name of the city is, and uh, basically she gets bullied into moving into this, like, small, like, almost broken down apartment, where she starts to get these very realistic dreams of the 60s, right, well, because the movie takes place in modern day, anyway, whatever, and so... But then the as as the movie goes on, the dreams start to get realer and realer. And how this works uh, is something that I'll explain a bit later. So now that the basic rough, really rough plot of it is out of the way, uh, the reason why this movie in particular was one of my favorite movies of the year, and in my opinion, the best movie to end the year, at least for me, was because of how I related to the story. Now, as far as the main character having this infatuation with the 60s, I personally don't have an infatuation with the 60s exactly, but I do have a very, like, huge interest in old American pop culture, right? And I'm not talking, like, the trendy stuff that, uh, like, kids on TikTok and stuff like that are doing these days, like, with the 90s, sometimes the 80s. Like, mine goes, like, all the way back to, like, the 30s, like, Mickey Rooney kind of pop culture, like, all the way back then in the 30s and 40s and stuff like that. Um, Watching the main character, Eloise, like, just the way how she would go to school and then just run back home so that she can go to bed and sleep so she can get into this sort of, like, uh... This is like world filled with everything that she wanted, which was the old uh, British London, you know, old old, old culture of uh, Soho, which is where the fashion school is and, you know, all that music and stuff. Because like early on in the film, we see like all these posters of old 60s fashion and old 60s musicians all around her walls because of the records that her grandmother played and stuff like that that really influenced her and we see her have this huge infatuation that like oh like it's basically like the lesson of the movie is to not romanticize the past and to really realize and and take it to heart that back then you know like it it, it like it wasn't as happy as people portrayed it to be like they had really big problems as the movie showed the other sort of main character of the film played by Anna Taylor-Joy or Anna 
Taylor Johnson. I don't know which one it is. Uh, really talented actress, by the way. But you know, the more more on on her later. But it shows like she, just like Eloise, came to the big city to follow her dreams to become a musician. And while it seems like she was making strides, it just like she just ended up being used and spit out by the big city. And once Eloise realizes this, like this is like a terrible real life thing, and she actually puts the pieces together in real life, it's too late. And you know, like while while there is that mystery of like who killed her or if or or, or if she's even alive, spoiler, she is alive. But uh, basically, the movie is about like not not romanticizing the past, and to really just like focus on making your life as good as it can be right now. Even though you might like things in the past, like like um, like uh, like Eloise would, uh, you know, like use things that she saw in her dream that she saw Anna Taylor Joy's. Anna Taylor Joy's character do like like with her hair and and even the clothes she wore, she would replicate that into her real life, and she found success with that. As like even at the end of the film, where we see her like a, uh, I think it's like a year or two later, putting on her own fashion show, using like sixties inspired clothes back from Anna Taylor Joy's character's time. All right, so basically how this movie connected to me was that i have this sort of infatuation myself with old culture and you know like it can be a dangerous thing because like because as much as i love the old culture and i like to like go to wikipedia and look up this stuff to see like how things were done back then as far as filmmaking uh you know like even, even the fashion and the big stars and musicians of the time that I like to listen to and watch, like Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland and stuff like that. You know, there's also no avoiding and accepting the harsh realities that they went through at the time. Like uh, like with Judy Garland and her addiction to the medication she was using. Well, was it medication or just drugs? Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Main, main, main thing is she was she, she got addicted to drugs at a young age basically from like the wizard of oz and stuff like that and that's an, a, a reality that even the director himself edgar wright like even admitted in some interviews that he had to come to terms with because he had some this infatuation i can't remember with which period in particular uh but he did have an infatuation with the past and he would ro romanticize the past and this movie was sort of like uh, a way for him, if, if I'm not like taking him out of context or anything, uh, a way for him to sort of get over it or to like teach that lesson to not over romanticize the past uh, like to the point where like, like, like you just block out all the problems that people went through back in the day, just like for your own enjoyment and stuff like that. So yeah, that's basically why. Wow, it's actually not like a good thing. Anyway, like that. That's basically why uh, the movie connected with me. It's basically why I like it. Just it gave me this boost of nostalgia, but also with the realism of yeah, things sucked back then, and and this like terrible tragic thing. That happened to Anna Taylor Joy's character. Like, I, I really recommend you watch the movie if you like Giallo films, if you like like uh, Alfred Hitchcock sort of mystery movies. Uh, even there's even some Brian, some Brian De Palma in there with like the cine with the cinematography and the sound design and stuff. If you like that kind of stuff, like 1981 Blowout with John Travolta, I definitely recommend that you check out this movie. Personally, one of my best of the year, probably my second, like, favorite film of 2021. And can't wait to watch it again, honestly. So that's basically the root of the video. I don't want this to hit 10 minutes, but it probably will. Uh, <laughs> so basically, 
the reason why I related to it, the reason why it was the best movie to end 2021 for me is because of the lesson to not over romanticize the past because of the nostalgia that the movie gave me because you know just like it's just just downright a good movie all right excuse me it's just it's just a good movie all together all right like the acting the cinematography everything you know some people are complaining about the writing but that's just like a few criticisms or whatever the cgi the just graphics overall in the movie look really really good the cinematography and sound design are some of the best i heard all of year last year thomas and mckenzie and anna hill joy do a great job in the lead roles just like everything about the movie from the lessons to the characters everything like it's it's just a great movie and i don't want to like go through it too much because i'll just be here all day not like i could rem remember it like it, that was two months ago i mean like, it, like of course i remember it but i don't like you know like all the way clearly remember every single thing about it but you know it's it's a great film you know it's not perfect or anything it's it's uh cliche around the corners and stuff you know it's you know it's very it's very like uh genre heavy if you've ever seen any giallo or you know old psychological thriller horror movies of the 60s and 70s then you'll definitely recognize some tropes maybe even find a bit predictable but you know it's it's a well executed film altogether at your right does it again of course like he almost always does uh, movie's not making that much at the box office, unfortunately. Not even, like, half its budget, but, you know, whatever. Well, not, like, whatever, but, but like, of course I want, you know, doesn't really matter. I'm going off topic, all right? So the main thing is, don't over-romanticize the past. It's a nice, like, nostalgia kick to have and stuff. But, you know, like, also recognize, like, the real problems and stuff that people went through and whatever. Uh, I'll probably cut this part out, whatever, but basically it's a good film, and uh, I like the message and stuff, thank you for watching, this has been a very confusing video, I'm not even sure if I got my point across, but thank you for watching, goodbye.